hey guys welcome back to my youtube channel i know you guys probably expected this video to be a kitchen reveal video but unfortunately the kitchen is not 100 percent complete yet there's still quite a few things that need to be done in the kitchen um for example the extractor is not up yet they've drilled into the stone and put up the bracket but it's still like not up as you can see in the background other things that need to be done include the um kitchen bench while it is completed it's like the unit has been installed um yeah but one thing that still needs to be done in terms of the bench is that i need to get the cushioning for the bench and also probably some scatter cushions i didn't want to rush it because obviously i need to decide on the right color that will match um the overall look of the kitchen and so while there's been other delays i felt let me also take my time in deciding what i want the bench or the cushioning of the bench to look like so i need you guys to maybe help me decide on what color i can use for the fabric um, which will be used for the cushioning um, as you've seen or might have seen in my videos the theme that we are going for in the kitchen is black your white and your natural wood so let me know what i can use for the cushioning for the bench i was thinking perhaps we could use that as an opportunity to bring or add more color to the kitchen so let me know in the comment section below what you think i should do with the bench and if you think i should get scatter cushions as well what colors do you have in mind um another thing that still needs to be done so there's currently a gap between the kitchen unit and the ceiling so they will be coming tomorrow to basically um hopefully tomorrow guys i, I keep saying um, this and that is going to happen tomorrow and then there's delays but the plan is that tomorrow they're coming through to basically do the finishing fillings at the top just to give the kitchen a clean and complete look um what's been done so far um in the last video i showed you the update the kitchen update and we didn't have countertops we didn't have a sink and we didn't have a stove but now we do have countertops and they look absolutely beautiful infinity did such an amazing job as you can see in the background we have a backsplash as well you might have seen if you watched the previous video when i went to visit interslab and to check out the infinity range i did speak to janine about possibly getting a backsplash and eventually we decided that you know what we're definitely getting a backsplash as opposed to doing mosaic in the kitchen i do not regret it the backsplash looks stunning it looks beautiful and i can't wait for you guys to see it and how it looks when the kitchen is complete we also finished our island it looks beautiful it's a two-toned island there's white marble stone and the extension part of it or the sitting area part of it is um black marble we also did our kitchen sink which is from frankie but we decided to hold off doing the plumbing for the kitchen mixer because we realized a few days ago that Frankie actually released a new mixer which looks absolutely beautiful. I don't want to tell you guys about it now because I want to leave an element of surprise but um, we are expecting to get that mixer and I've decided to give away the initial mixer that we wanted to install. I'm actually planning on doing a big giveaway at the end of this kitchen makeover series. So once the kitchen reveal is done, then i will probably do a big giveaway so please do subscribe if you're not subscribed you better subscribe now else you might miss out on the opportunity to win the big prize anyway so during the process of switching from an electric hob to a gas hob i learned quite a few things that i felt will be very educational and insightful for most of you who are using gas appliances or are planning to use gas appliances or install gas appliances in your home so yeah, I sat down with Mr. Temba Kaba, who is representing the Liquefied Petroleum Gas Association of South Africa. He basically answered all my questions and concerns regarding the safe installation and use of gas appliances. I hope you guys enjoy this video. I know sometimes it's so easy when you're watching videos, especially sit down videos on YouTube to just watch the first five minutes 
or to even just like fast forward to the end to watch the last five minutes but i feel that this is a very important conversation and topic and that each of you needs to watch it in order to equip yourself. It might You might not find this information valuable today, but sometime in the future, it might come in really handy. So please do watch this video and I hope you enjoy. Thank you so much for joining me today, Mr. Klaba. Do you mind perhaps introducing yourself to my audience and telling us what you do? Thank you so much. My name is Temba Klaba. I'm the trading facilitator for the LPGSA and also a registered LP guest installer, registered with the SAQCC guest. So Mr. Kleber, how do I verify or know that you are indeed a registered guest installer? Uh, very important is that uh, you cannot just pick up any other person on the street because there's a process uh, that the installers have got to go through, meaning that they've got to receive the necessary training, okay, through the LPGSA, and then once they've got uh, the registration through a uh, SA uh, uh, QCC guest, then they can start operation. They start to operate. Mm -hmm. That is for is meant for the reason for that is to actually ensure the safety, the safety of the installations, that each and every installation that gets done is done in a very safe way and according to the standards. I hope most people who are listening to this um, understand why it's important because we've seen there's been many incidences where people have had gas explosions in their homes and they've lost loved ones. So how do I then, as someone who is switching to a gas appliance or gas appliances in my home, how do I ensure that you are indeed a registered gas installer? Uh, very important uh, is that um, what, when you get registered uh, with the SAQCC gas, what happens is that uh, you get issued with a, um, the, the installer's card. Yes. Okay, that you have to carry it with you all the times when you visit the site. So now, what is it? Is that in, in, on that installer's card? Okay, you will have the picture, the picture of the installer. Okay, and also you will have actually the name and the ID number. Mm. Okay, for that particular installer, and also the expiry date, which is very important on the card as well, because that is your license to yes. practice. So each and every three years. It, 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 it expires, then an installer needs to, to, to go and do the, uh, the, uh, the refresher training on it. Okay, great. Okay, my next question, Mr. Kleiber. So when it comes to the appliances, I've always been under the impression that I can go to any reputable store and buy any gas appliance and that it would be safe to install in my home. But one thing this process has taught me that it's not every appliance that you find in a reputable store is verified in terms of the LPGSA. Why is it important to ensure that the appliances that we are purchasing are indeed verified or allowed in terms of the LPGSA for installations? LPGSA has a mandate from the Department of um, Employment and Labor to register every guest in every gas appliance that is uh, used in this country. Mm. That is to ensure that all the appliances that are imported or all the appliances that are manufactured in, in this country, they are manufactured according to the safety standard, which is SANS 1539. Um, very important for uh, the customer um, who, who visit an, any, any other store to purchase any gas appliance that um, each and every appliance has got um, on the nameplate has got a uh, the model number, mm -hmm. okay, and then that model number is a number that you, you as a as a customer can actually match it with uh, what uh, MPGSA has um, on its uh, on, on the safe appliance uh, scheme, okay. Then you take that uh, model number and you type it type it on the system on the database. Then it will be able to actually bring all the information. Uh, about that uh, particular installation, if it's um, uh, an, an approved appliance. If you find that that appliance it's not on the database, then definitely that appliance is a non-approved appliance to be used in South Africa. What would the risk of that be? Would that appliance almost pose a risk to whoever's installing it? There's a very serious risk um, at the end of the day regarding that particular installation. I mean, that particular appliance that is not. Um, uh, safe appliance approved. Uh, the risk is it's not number one, it's not has been tested mm. because each and every appliance is, uh, when, when before you can um, uh, 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 get an uh, sell an appliance or, or as, as a distributor, that appliance has to be uh, first tested. 
by the testing station, it has to meet uh, 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 the, the, the sense 1539 uh, standard uh, requirements before it can be actually issued with a permit yes. that it can be used safely. So the risk is that if that particular appliance can be used um, um, anywhere in the country without being approved or tested, the risk can be that it can explode mm. and it can cause a very serious uh, uh, incident um, within our communities. Yeah. The insurance actually, as they know all the rules and regulations and all the requirements in terms of uh, of the uh, of the standards and, and and everything like that around that, so definitely is if they found that is established that after there's an incident that has occurred, that that particular appliance has not been uh, uh, approved, then there's a, there's a possibility that they cannot pay. Would the same process be required for 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 the gas cylinders as well? Can I buy just any gas cylinder, or is it important to be careful as to which gas cylinders are being used in our home? Now, uh, if I may just uh, take you just a little bit uh, back, and uh, nowadays is we find that uh, with the um, this challenge that we have uh, with regards to the electricity, okay, so there's a lot of people now that are opportunists, so people that think that it's just that easy, as, as, like as an easy kind of a process that I can just uh, refill or do a cylinder or whatever. Are you, so are you referring to people trying to supply gas? Yes, okay. that's hundred percent. Yeah. So they think that anybody can just supply a cylinder, any cylinder, but that is not the case. There is also a procedure that needs to be followed. Okay. Again, the Department of uh, Employment and Labour um, has also uh, mandated the uh, the LPGSA. Uh, to have control on the on the on the cylinders that are are used in uh, in South Africa, meaning that uh, to answer your question is that uh, you may not uh, just purchase any cylinder from anywhere. Cylinders have got also to be verified and approved according to the uh, SABS, uh, SABS related standard. And um, what happens is that uh, we've got uh, reputable dealers in our in our country. And where you can actually buy your or purchase your, your cylinder from. Yes. And then how to get that is uh, very easy. Again, you can log on to the um, um, LPGSA uh, website, and which is www.lpgas.co.za. Just on the front page, that's where you're going to see all the, all the, uh, all the, uh, the reputable dealers. When you click on the uh, uh, verification cylinders and appliances, then it will bring all the reputable dealers on the list that you can purchase cylinders from. Yes. So meaning that um, if you would then um, go and purchase uh, uh, cylinders uh, from any other people that are not listed on that um, uh, website, then that will impose a serious, a serious, serious risk that can mm. actually cause very uh, uh, serious accidents in our communities and killing our people. And uh, because uh, there's also there's a lot of uh, procedures that uh, that needs to be followed on refilling of these cylinders. Because mm. anyone can not just refill a cylinder without following a procedure. Yes. So it's very important that if purchasing your cylinder from your from the repeatable dealers, is it, it actually ensures that uh, that, that cylinder that, that you carry or cylinder that you purchase or that cylinder that you actually um, using at your at your home will be a safe a safe one. Mm. Mr. Kaba, can you then confirm is there any unique Thing on the gas cylinder that would identify it as a valid gas cylinder or a verified gas cylinder. Okay, to identify if that cylinder is a, um, a cylinder from the reputable dealer, for instance, let's take a, um, a the Oryx cylinder. An Oryx cylinder will, will is is a kind of a lime green kind of a cylinder, yes. and then you'll find that the it should have okay the seal that is actually. Greenish in color, yes. okay, that is also actually a branded uh, Oryx, yes. Oryx to match the, the brand on the cylinder. So if you have a separate kind of a brand on an Oryx cylinder, which is not an Oryx uh, seal, seal, then you would know exactly that that is not actually a cylinder that has been filled from a reputable deal. Mm -hmm. On each and every so there is a special or specific unique number that is there. Okay? The numbers are not the same at all. So each and every seal is different. So it's easy that you can trace back the cylinder because what's happening is that that cylinder, seal number that you have on the cylinder, if there's an incident that, can, that has occurred somewhere, if that seal number is available, then that seal number can be taken back to the, to, to the, to the uh, where you purchase that cylinder with these illegal fillers. What they do is that they do put uh, seal, seals on, 
on everybody sitting there, that what they're feeling, everybody's sitting there, okay? And then illegally, because by law, you're not supposed to be refilling other people's cylinders. You have to only fill your cylinders. Okay, they do put seals on, but those cylinder seals are not genuine seals. Mm. They're not actually matching the brand of the cylinder. They do have seal numbers, but people that they should know is that uh, those seal numbers that they see there, those seal numbers are all the same seal numbers. Okay? <laughs> so it's basically fake. <laughs> yeah, it's fake. It's fake serial actual numbers. serial numbers. Mm. And the highest risk, biggest risk that you have is that you can end up overfilling a cylinder, which is a great, very big risk when mm. it comes to, to gas. And then, mm. and then it can result into huge explosions. So it is very critical that our people are educated about the, the, seals, the seals and the seal numbers. Staying on the topic of cylinders, does the size of the cylinder matter? Because I've seen um, jokes flying around on platforms such as Twitter where someone is using a 19 kg cylinder for the normal standard um, gas heater. So does the size of the cylinder matter and what is the risk, if, if any, of using a, a cylinder that is not suitable for, let's say, a gas heater? Like, like now it's winter time whereby um, there's a lot of people I mean, using um, these rollabout heaters and uh, we're having lots and lots of incidences around that. Um, the main, main uh, thing that we found from our investigation about cylinders as well, okay? People not understanding, okay, what size cylinders that they have to use mm -hmm. for the rollabout heater. Mm -hmm. um, specifically talking about the rollabout heater, okay? It can only fit on a 9 kg cylinder at the back, mm. okay, which is designed to fit that cylinder. So you will now get some people saying, okay, 9 kg cylinder uh, gets finished quickly. <laughs> so now I can connect a 48 kg cylinder uh, that will last me so long. That is a very, very big risk. For instance, let's take an example. The rollout heater has got wheels on. Yes. Okay, it's a, a movable appliance. Anytime. A, a, a child or kid that's actually playing around can push this uh, uh, rollout heater whilst it's, it's being used and what can happen is that it will pull that cylinder that for the 8 kg cylinder mm. and then um, disengaging the, 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 the connections on the cylinders. Well, since we are um, now installing the gas stove, does the size of the cylinders matter or the number of cylinders that are used, does it matter? Yes, it does. When an installation gets designed, it's like your electricity. Let's take an example. If you overload um, your, your plugs or your, your system, your electronic system in your house, then it means that it will trip. Trip the main so switch. Then switch. So the same thing now happens with your, with your gas. If you've got uh, so many burners, uh, five burners connected to a system, mm -hmm. and you connected those, um, they are only uh, supplied from a single safe cylinder. That definitely is um, on full operation. What will happen is that your system won't work 100%. Mm. So the performance of the system will be reduced and also will, it can result in a flame out situation. Yes. So, answering your question is that yes, you have to, when you use a system, you've got your, your, your supply has got to measure your demand. And then, when it comes to the caging for the gas cylinders, is it a must to have the caging or is it personal preference? especially in a residential home? It is um, uh, not a requirement to, to have a cage um, in a residential um, a zoning or zoned area. And only when there is an access, a, 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 a public access, that, that, that is when you have to have to, to have a cage. For instance, let's take an example. You do get like the townhouses that are not fenced. Yes. So in that areas, you've got like standalone houses. So in those areas, definitely is you will have to, or an installer has to have to install a cage before sign off of that installation. Mm. But also, if you feel that you, you, you do need to put a cage like in this case here. Yeah. I have a child yes, yeah, I said, yeah. <laughs> who likes So you such look at things. the risk and then you look at the, te the risk of tempering and stuff like that. Mm. In that case, then you can then uh, um, put, uh, put up a cage. So lastly, Mr. Kava, I want you to please take me through the requirements of a gas installation. Besides the things that we've spoken about, now the physical installation. What are the requirements when it comes to installing the, the cylinders on the outside as well as the, the hob in the, on the inside of the house? 
Uh, let's take uh, this uh, particular installation that uh, we are busy with here and in your premises. Um, first thing that, that before you can uh, do any installation, uh, firstly uh, the site inspection needs to be done. That's the first thing on a, during your first meeting, yes. site meeting that you need to look at. Have a site meeting and then that's where then you have to now look at the uh, location of cylinder of, of cylinders or cylinder or a cylinder. Where I want the cylinders where to want be located. To be. We will actually guide you through the sense uh, 1087 uh, part 1 uh, standard as to the requirements are that <laughs> your cylinder should be at least 5 meters from, uh, for instance, I'm giving an example, 5 meters from any sources of ignitions. It could either be your, um, your air conditioner or... Mm, outside lamp. I'm coming to that point. <laughs> <laughs> that, yeah, that's right. And then also the outside lamp, okay, it should be at least 1.5 meters if above the, the level of the cylinder, 1.5 meters. Electrical fence as well, the same at least 1.5 meters. The doors, you also look at the doors as well, how far the cylinder should, from the shell of the cylinder, mm. it should be at least one meter, one meter from the shell of the cylinder to the opening of the door. And then coming to the windows, the windows, if there's a window on top, the window should be at least three meters um, from the top of the cylinder yes. to the opening of the window where that window is, or else uh, it can be reduced to, um, to a lower level uh, unless you put a roofing on top. Okay, following the standard, putting a roofing can be reduced to a shorter distance okay. that, is, that is required. Also, the other things that you look at is your, your drains. The cylinder should be about Two meter from the to, from the cylinder from the cylinder shell to the to the to okay. particular drain. So those are the things that that we as installers we're looking at. Inside of the house, in terms of the gas hob, what are the requirements in terms of where it needs to be situated? When we look on the inside now, um, like in your uh, in your particular installation that you have, uh, like now we are uh, um, busy inst gonna installing the uh, the uh, the hob. Okay, it can be either the hob or the stove, and then your your burners. Okay, from the from the standard, the one thousand eight seven part one standard, it clearly states that, that from your from the end, okay, of your of your of your four burner or it can be five burner whatever mm -hmm. stove or stove or your hob, it should be your your plug or any switch any isolator switch should be at least two hundred millimeters. Okay, away from from the edges of your. Of your of your stove yes. or of your of your or your hob, and also another thing that I would like to highlight is that in most of the cases uh, when we when we when we have to install stoves when there's a conversion like this one you have mm -hmm. from from electricity to to gas yes. we always find that there's a switch that is that has already been installed at the top of the of your of your existing electrical uh, stove, mm. that switch has to be it has to be removed from there to be at least two hundred millimeters from the edges of the of your of your hob or the yes. stove. Also, lastly, one thing, uh, sometimes you find that uh, there's also switches at the back at the back. There mustn't be any switch at the, at the back of at the back of your stove. If the if you have the, the, the size the, no at the back. If you have a freestanding stove. Oh, I so, see. I'm yes. thinking. I'm thinking about our kitchen, and I'm just like, what do you mean? But I get it. So for the people who have freestanding. Yeah, free, freestanding yes, stove. Yes, freestanding. it is not allowed that you have a switch at the back as well. Okay. And then in case of the hob, like in your case, um, it is not uh, that you should have a switch underneath your underneath the, the, the gas hob. Yes. So in that section. Or oh, inside the, the, the drawers underneath the hob. Underneath the hob. There shouldn't be any. I'm glad you don't have those. And obviously we did have um, switches closer to the to the gas hob, but they have been moved um, already because I obviously contemplated that you would refuse to install a hob should we not move them. And I remember I called you and I asked you what the distance needs to be and we have moved um, the plugs. But yeah, um, what would the risk be then of these plugs being a bit close? At the end of the day, you've got to issue a COC, the Certificate of Compliance, that says everything compliant to um, comply to the standard. So mm. you as an installer issuing that COC, you're saying everything is safe and 100%, meaning that now it also covers your insurance yes. as a homeowner to say, I'm safe with this installation in case my house burns down and then I've got everything.
uh, certified and, and proving that everything was done by a registered installer and according to the SANS standard. Yes, yeah, so the risk we're looking at that if you had if you have a leak of gas, if a gas is then that on, on, on your system and that you're having the plugs next to it and switches and stuff like that can be a problem. And also if you if you find for instance like you have your um, your switch installed on top of your um, on top of your burners of your stove and then the heat that comes out from the stove can actually burn that uh, uh, oh. particular switch. Yeah. That is it from me and Mr. Kaga. I just wanted to recap everything that we've discussed in this video and the important things that you guys need to note. Firstly, it's very important to get a reputable and registered gas installer when switching to gas appliances in your home. Secondly, it's very important the type of gas cylinders and the appliances that you install in your homes. Very, very important to check that your cylinders as well as your appliances have been approved by the LPGSA. Thank you so much for watching this video. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think and if you've learned something. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Do switch on your notification bell so that you're notified when I drop the next video. Bye.